you made it to episode two. That means you're alive. You survived. Welcome. Um, hopefully episode one was helpful and we're going to dive right in on episode two. This will be a shorter episode because we are going to make sure that we explain what transmission distance or TD values are, why they're so important, why it's kind of the secret sauce to Hugh Forge and why you will not be successful at Hugh Forge until you understand this principle. This is by far the most fundamental foundational concept in Hugh Forge. Literally, if you understand this one thing, the entire program opens up to a whole new world. So what is transmission distance? What is TD value? All it is, okay, all TD values are, is how far light travels through a filament before it's blocked, okay? There are more kind of scientific definitions out there. But for the sake of our tutorial, this beginner series, transmission distance is how far light will travel through a filament before it is blocked. OK, let's let's paint this out a little bit. Imagine holding a piece of plastic up to the sun. If it's thin and it's a little opaque or it's a little translucent, the light will shine easily through the plastic. Right. You'll be able to see the sun through the plastic. But let's say you hold up a blackout curtain to the sun. The light is not traveling through the blackout curtain. If you have blackout curtains in your room, the reason you hang them up is because you know that light won't travel through the blackout curtain. You don't hang up a clear kind of curtain on your window if you don't want the light to pass through. If it's a thin piece of plastic that is translucent, the TD filament or the TD value will be relatively high. Okay. If it is a blackout curtain, the TD value will be very low. The lower the number, the less light or the less of the layer before it will get to be shown through. You see, Hue Forge builds your image by stacking layers of different filament. The software is going to predict the color that you're going to see by figuring out how much light will pass through each layer. Let me kind of put this on display for you guys in Hue Forge. I'm going to use this cute little alien that's available on my Patreon, by the way, um, for the sake of our demonstration. So TD values, these numbers right here on the left, the lower the value, the less light, or the less of the layer before that's going to be let in. So let's take a look at our Bamboo Lab Basic Black we see that it has a, a value of 0.6. That is a very low TD value. That means if I place black at the very top, okay, if I put black up here, you would be able to assume that it is going to cover up everything under it because it has such a low TD value. It's very opaque. So let's test it out. Okay, we put black up at the top and what did it do to our image? It absolutely destroyed it because it has a very low TD value. These colors are not able to shine through the black very well. And if we bring this down even more, you'll see that it's basically just like it looks terrible. It looks awful. We don't want this. And that's because we have such a low TD value on this filament. We're going to press spacebar to disable. OK, we learned that in the first episode. And we're going to bring our layers back to where they were at. Now, if we look at the white that's on top, the reason that this has a different effect on our on our picture here is because it has a TD value of five, which means it is more translucent than the black. The black is at a 0.6, which means it's going to cover up anything and everything in its path. And the white is at a five which means that it is going to let a little bit of what's under it through, which is why we get the red shining through and we get these really cool kind of gradients here on our little alien guy because the white is more translucent. If we bring the red further up, we're going to start to see that the red is going to begin to shine through the white more and more because we're getting closer and closer and closer. We're telling Hugh Forge to build more layers of the red. Now our red has a 4.0 TD. That means that it's a little bit more kind of opaque than the white, which is at a 5.0 TD. I'm going to demonstrate this a little more drastically so that you can see it. We're going to disable the red by pressing spacebar, and we're going to drag in our beige. Now our beige has an 8.0 TD. Okay, that's pretty high. 
That means that it's going to let a lot of the layers under it through. So if we drag this in here and we're going to put it right above the black, we're going to put it one layer above the black. Did you see anything happen? Do you see the color? Did you see it change at all? You saw no change. And that was because the beige is so, so, so translucent because it has an 8.0 TD. If we delete it and bring in the red and we're going to put it at the layer above the black, it was very minor, but we do see a little bit of a change. We can see a little bit of the red kind of poke through and that's because we have a 4.0 TD. This is less than half, or this is exactly half of what the beige is. We're going to delete that. We're going to go ahead and drag in our magenta that has a 3.0 TD. And you can see that the magenta is shining through even a little bit more than the red was. And we actually get some like very clear magenta up here where there's not that much white kind of shining through. Okay, that's because this has a 3.0 TD. It's very low. We're getting to like the very opaque places. Let's find an even lower TD to demonstrate this. We're going to do the Bamboo Lab Matte Pine Green. This has a TD of one. Okay, this is a very strong filament. We're going to zoom in here and you can see that the green is shining through. Now, as we bring the green up, okay, you're going to see that this becomes very, very green, very, very fast. It quickly overtakes the white, especially in these areas right here, because of how opaque this filament is. So to recap, transmission distance, the higher the number, the more translucent the filament is. We don't hardly, we don't see this beige hardly at all because of how opaque it is. But if we start to bring it up by, you know, a lot, we're going to see that we actually get this kind of really cool blended color with our little alien guy. And that's because it takes a lot of layers of stacking for the TD value to become fully kind of saturated or fully, fully marked. You're going to notice something as we start in HueForge. So I might as well go ahead and explain it now as we're talking about TD values. And it's these little parallel lines here on your color core. This essentially means that if I bring this layer down one or the other, I am not going to be getting much more beige because it is as a saturated might not be the right word, but it is a, it is as full as the as the program will allow. So these kind of darkest points here where the beige is hitting the black, we're not going to see any more beige as we continue to build it up. The beige is as beige as it's going to get. Now we will see less white because the white is not quite there yet. So we will see it there, but these dark spots of beige are going to stay the exact same color. Okay, so like right here is a good example. As I bring this up, these spots right here are staying roughly the same color. You're not getting much change at all. But as we take away white, you're gonna see that the white starts to change a lot. All right, and so TD values are the most important thing about HueForge. It is very, very important. If you get your TD values wrong, okay, it, it's going to mess up your, your program. And that's why marking your own filaments are so, so important. Let's say I have two different grays. Okay, so let's type in gray here. We're going to kind of do a little example. Okay, so let's say I have, I'm going to pick this copy master 3d turbo gray okay actually i want a darker gray let's pick a darker gray um let's do yeah like this overture gray okay i'm gonna take beige out we're gonna bring gray up a little bit okay so let's say i'm using this gray right here let's say this is the gray that i own this was the overture space gray so this is the gray that i own this is the gray that i have in my in my collection over here. This is the gray that I want to use. But let's say when I'm in HueForge, I actually drag in the Bamboo Lab gray, the basic blue gray, and I drag that over. You can see that this changes the image quite a bit. And the preview that I'm getting here is not going to be fully accurate to the result that I'm going to get on my printer, even though they're both gray. Let's play around with purple. Let's say I have this indigo purple as a 1.1 TD. So this is very opaque. This is a very strong, strong color. You can see like this, this color 
overtakes our white like very, very quickly. You don't get a lot of white shining above the purple. All right. So and it covers the black very, very well. Um, but let's say so let's say I'm editing with the 1.1 TD kind of basic indigo purple. But let's say what I actually have in my collection is this 10.0 purple pink translucent by Polylight. And I drag that in. That's going to give me an incredibly different result than what I have kind of on my shelf. And so you want to make sure that you are editing your hue forges with the with the right colors. And this is a, a pretty good example here. We have this polylight purple and then we have this other polylight purple and they're two very different purples. And in standard mode, you might not see a big difference, but as we start playing around with other modes, especially, especially, especially color match, we are going to see that we need as close to the right colors as we have because the TD values are going to change the, the kind of preview that we get. So the most important thing that you need to understand about TD values is the lower the number, the more opaque, the, the stronger the color is going to be and the less lights or the less of the previous layer that it's going to let through. The higher the number, the higher that value, the more of the color that it's going to let through. You can see that when I drag this purple, this is an 18 TD purple, I'm getting more black shining through especially if we disable the white here, I'm getting more black shining through than I would be than if I brought in this light purple. There's almost no black shining through here. This one, we see a lot of black shining through. This one, almost no black shining through. The lower the number, the less of the previous filament that is going to be shown through. This is very, 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 very important. So you can also add your own TD values. Let's say I have Sunlu is a, actually, no, we'll do eSun because I don't think there's any eSun. Okay, so we don't have any eSun. eSun is a very popular filament brand. I don't have any eSun filaments loaded in here. eSun's not pre-loaded by default. Um, Sunlu has a little bit. And, you know, that's, that's great, but this is definitely not all the colors that Sunlu has. You can click new filament and you will get a little pop-up um, that will allow you to add a filament and you can add your own custom TD values. We're not going to talk about that quite yet. That's pretty advanced being able to determine what a TD value is of a filament. We're not going to be talking about that in this tutorial, but you do have the option to add your own filament if that's something that you know how to do and want to do. All right, here is your homework. All right, I need you to add three filaments to your color core here. And I want you to pick three different kind of TD values. So something with a pretty low TD value, something with a pretty like medium TD value, maybe like a four, and then something with like a very opaque or, or a very translucent TD value, like the beige. I just want you to play around with these settings here. And I want you to, to really think deeply about why the colors are doing what they're doing as you're dragging them up and down in your color core here. Why am I getting more beige like this than I am like this or more black like this than I am like this? I need you guys to really understand what TD values are and how they change um, as you're kind of editing in HueForge. The next tutorial, we are going to talk about um, specifically really diving deep kind of into um, standard mode and how HueForge is looking at your image, um, especially in grayscale. Um, we're going to be playing around with this image over here and why HueForge is making the decisions that it's making and its output over here. But we can't understand that until we fully know and see what TD values are and why they're doing the things that they're doing. I hope this tutorial was helpful. Hopefully um, y'all can let me know down in the comments if, if you need more help in this area. 
if you are looking for more personalized help, more help with where you're currently at in Hue Forge, check out my Patreon. I offer one-on-one -on -one coaching as well as merchant licenses to all of my exclusive work and my Maker World work. You can support me down below. Huge shout out to my patrons that support me right now. You guys are the reason that I can do this stuff. And so I really do appreciate you guys and all of your support. Check out my Maker World. I have lots of files on there. You can practice Hue Forge there. And I will catch you guys in the next tutorial. Thank you all. And yeah, do all the things to help the algorithm. Help someone else find this video. All right, see ya.